All right, here's a sim on the statement of cash flows. This is part one now. For each numbered item, indicate whether it would be added to net income, subtracted from net income, or not adjusted to net income in the operating section of the statement of cash flows prepared using the indirect method. The indirect method, as you probably know, starts with net income from the income statement, and then you either add back or subtract certain items to arrive at operating cash flows. And number one says gain on sale of investments. Are we going to add that to net income? Are we going to subtract that from net income? Or are we not going to adjust it at all? And the answer is we're going to subtract gains from net income to arrive at cash flows from operating activities. Since the gains made net income go up, they need to be subtracted from net income since the asset sale needs to be reported in the investing section of the cash flow statement, not the operating section. And if the gain is not subtracted from net income, it'll be double counted in the cash flow statement. It'll be counted once in operations and a second time as part of investing in flow. So if we're using the indirect method, you'll subtract gains. If we were using the direct method, we would ignore this completely because if we were using the direct method, we don't start with net income. Number two says depreciation expense. Do we add back to net income? Do we subtract from net income or no adjustment? And of course, we'll add depreciation expense back to net income to arrive at cash flows from core operations, from operating activities. And that's because the indirect method starts with net income and the depreciation expense that was taken on the income statement is actually a non-cash expense so we add it back to net income to determine cash provided by operations. Once again, if we were using the direct method, we would ignore, ignore depreciation expense if the direct method was being used. Number three, dividends paid to stockholders. Do we add back to net income? Do we subtract that from net income or no adjustment? And the answer would be no adjustment to net income because dividends paid is not already included in net income because it's not on the income statement. And as far as the cash flow statement's concerned, dividends paid is a financing outflow, not an operating outflow. So no adjustment is needed to net income because dividends paid does not appear in the operating section of the statement of cash flows. It appears as a financing outflow. So the answer is no adjustment. Number four, income from investee under the equity method. So you're accounting for an investment in an investee under the equity method and they earned money, so you put that on your income statement as income from investee. Well, on the cash flow statement prepared under the indirect method, is that added back to net income? Should we subtract this from net income or no adjustment? What do you think? And this is going to have to be subtracted from net income, like a gain would be. Income from investee is on the income statement already as part of income, so it's in net income, it needs to be subtracted from the operating section under the indirect method. So subtracted from net income in the operating section of the statement of cash flows because it doesn't represent cash received, it's just income. It represents accrual basis income. It doesn't represent any cash, so just take it out of there, subtract it. And if this were the direct method, you wouldn't touch this at all because it wouldn't already be in there on the cash flow statement because under the direct method you wouldn't be starting with net income. Number five, purchase of equipment. So you bought new equipment, do you add that back to net income, subtract from net income, or no adjustment under the indirect method? And there'd be no adjustment to net income because purchasing equipment doesn't impact net income. So if you're doing the indirect method on the statement of cash flows and you're starting with net income, that has not been impacted by the purchase of this equipment. And as far as the cash flow statement is concerned, the purchase of equipment is reported as an investing outflow, not an operating outflow. So no adjustment is needed in the operating section because the transaction didn't affect net income and doesn't affect the operating cash flow statement. The only impact on the cash flow statement from this transaction should be an investing outflow. So there's really no adjustment to net income because it doesn't impact the operating section. This sim, we're going to look at the statement of cash flows from the standpoint of FASB versus GASB. 
So for each item, determine the correct treatment as operating, investing, or financing, inflow, or outflow. Now keep in mind that GASB has two financing sections. All right, interest received. Good review. We just looked at that. Under US GAAP, FASB says interest received has to be what? That's operating inflow. But what about proprietary funds? How does GASB treat interest received from investments? GASB treats interest received as investing inflow. So there's a difference between FASB and GASB on how they treat interest. All right, what do we do with interest paid? Under US GAAP, under US GAAP, interest paid is operating outflow. But under GASB for proprietary funds, where there are two financing sections, Interest paid is either capital and related financing or non-capital financing, depending on what the borrowing was for. So if the borrowing, if the reason why you're paying interest is because you borrowed money to grow the water company, right? Because this is a proprietary fund. So the water company borrowed money to grow, then it's capital and related financing interest paid. But if the water company needed an emergency loan, and had to pay interest on it, then it would be non-capital financing interest. So that's a big note to take. Interest paid is operating outflow under US GAAP, but under GASB rules for the enterprise fund and internal service fund, interest paid is an outflow from capital and related financing or an outflow from non-capital financing. Remember that the general fund wouldn't have a statement of cash flows, right? And neither would the government-wide statements. So the only time you'll see a cash flow statement under GASB is in the fund-based statements for the proprietary fund. All right, what about dividends received? You made an investment and now you're receiving dividends. Under US GAAP, we said that's operating inflow. No choice. But what is it under proprietary funds? It's investing inflow, just like interest received. Interest received, dividends received, for enterprise fund, internal service fund, they're investing in flow because the government looks at it this way. You made an investment and now when you get a return on that investment, it's considered investing in flow, just like the investment itself. When you made the investment, that was investing outflow. Now that you're getting interest and dividends from that investment, it's investing in flow. GAP doesn't look at it that way. GAP says you make an investment, that's an investing outflow. But then when you get interest and dividends, it's operating inflow. So those little differences right there is where the CPA FAR exam could test you. Okay, what about purchase of fixed assets? What's that under US GAAP? What kind of outflow is that? And what about under proprietary funds? What kind of outflow? Let me know in the comments section what you think the answer is. And then after you like and subscribe, go to cpaexamtutoring.com, home of the I-75 course, and get yourself on the right road to passing far.